So welcome everyone to how high schools can engage more students. Our speakers today are Nava and Richa. Just a little bit of background information on both of them. So Richa, Richa, do you want to wave and say hi? So we know which one you are. There you are. Richa is a senior at University High School in Normal, Illinois. She's been interested in philosophy from a young age and joined Plato Student Advisory Council to introduce more philosophy education in her community. She hopes to make philosophy accessible for many because it encourages many to think critically about the world around them. And then Nava. Nava, do you want to wave? Hi, Nava. Nava is a junior at Atlanta International School. Her interest in philosophy has grown out of her passion for equity and social justice. She has taken several classes on philosophy and she hopes to make similar opportunities accessible to other students through the Plato Student Advisory Council. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Nava and Richa. Um, so before we start, do you mind sharing the screen sharing capacity with me? Yes. Thanks. Okay, yeah, it looks like it's working. No, we're good. Okay. Okay, so, oh, can everyone see my screen? Good. Nope. Okay, so I'm Richa, like our lovely host said. And this is how high schools can engage more students. So, no. Okay. I'm not very good at Zoom. So, okay. So first, I guess we should start off by saying what are high schools missing and like, what is the problem in schools nowadays? So as many teachers and educators and students like myself have noticed, the literature comprehension rates are decreasing, math testing rates are decreasing, proficiency rates are decreasing. And while this might be um, a trend that's happened for years now, it's clear to see that high schools are missing something, especially um, public schools. So there are quite a few problems in school nowadays, but not to fear, we have some solutions. <laughs> but first, let's ad address what some schools are missing. So many high school classes are limited to a specific topic. Now, this may sound good to specialize in a certain topic, but when a social science class simply teaches about American history during the 20th century, especially for a repeated number of years, like say all throughout middle school and high school, it can be kind of limiting to the student's knowledge and student's critical thinking skills or learning about the same scientific principles over and over and over again, especially in middle school, which is a really critical time for thinking and development within a child that can be very harmful to their overall like comprehension and critical thinking skills, which is why being limited to a specific topic within a class or like repetition in education over years is a significant problem. Another thing that high schools are missing is intersectionality between classes. So for example, philosophy is a really important topic that allows for inter intersectionality between different areas. So the social sciences or humanities don't have a lot in common with the sciences, except for philosophy. Philosophy bridges the natural world and the thinking world, as I like to say, and it allows us to have really complex conversations like, sure, we might not explore philosophy in a, um, like an everyday class, everyday kind of scenario, like my school doesn't have a philosophy class and the only way philosophy is at my school is through philosophy club, which I run, but um, intersectionality between classes is something that students are missing because they're not able to piece together concepts and like they're not able to like analyze and like figure out like oh this is causing this or figure out like oh this scientific development for the, this development in history like students aren't being taught this and that's a significant problem because 
by, by most schools not even teaching philosophy, they're already losing one factor that could increase intersectionality between classes. Another high school or another lack in high school classes are many students not being interested in just learning for the grade. While it is important to have a, a method of assessment for students, many students feel pressured just to memorize things for exams, and many students often have to take notes or just are simply lectured at and not really like the material isn't really discussed very well. And so when students are simply learning for the grade and they don't have any interest in going beyond it, this overall dampens the amount of like learning they actually absorb and retain and are able to use in the future. Finally, there are many different forms of assessment. There should be many different forms of assessment per a classroom. For example, discussions are very beneficial instead of regular memorization word vomit exams. <laughs> And discussions or presentations or group projects or essays or many different kinds of assessment aren't really present in schools rather than taking a regular AP or IB exam at the end of the year, which tests everything a student knows within three hours rather than months of learning. Another, um, another thing that high schools tend to... Um, this isn't uniform across high schools throughout the country, but an A, which is what mo most students are achieving for, um, is very different in a certain in a certain class than a different class within the same high school. And an A doesn't mean the same thing within my school or, for example, Nava school. It can mean totally different things. And high schools don't really have a uniform way of assessing these students, which is why... Um, sure, an AP exam might be necessary, but still there is no... Um, assessment over time. It's simply within a sitting, which is what high schools are missing. So um, let's move on to how we can change the classroom. So one method for changing a classroom could be um, employing various teaching methods. So while it might be easy to just stick to rote-based examination and memorization and simply lecturing at a student and, and them taking notes that they don't even understand, um, many teachers could take certain concepts further, like rather than just like skating over the 1920s in history class, like they could they could figure like figure out like, oh, what's caused some of the problems in the 1920s? Like what would drive that further? Like figuring out what could go on. Or for hands-on learning, that's also a great method of students figuring things out and puzzling things out for themselves. Like, for example, in a science class, rather than the teacher lecturing how um, like ionization energy works in chemistry, students could figure it out based on a lab or based on um, like trends that they see. Another uh, thing we could change the classroom that could, that could help us change the classroom is expression of student opinion. So many classrooms are simply teacher talks, student listens, and that's not really beneficial for the students learning or the teacher's um, assessment. So one major thing are Socratic discussions where students are able to express their opinions. And while the frequency of Socratic discussions has increased in recent years, many schools still don't employ this. And there are many differences between um, rote-based formulaic essays and students actually expressing their opinions and building off of other students' contributions. Finally, we can employ different diverse learning styles and differentiated instruction. This would help us engage more students because many students learn in many different ways. The way I learn and the way Nava learns may not overlap. And sometimes it's more important to focus on students who may not who may struggle with the subject, like a student who may excel in philosophy, but is lacking in math because they, because words make more sense th to them than numbers, they might need extra help in math or they could help another um, fellow classmate in philosophy. And so the differentiated instruct instruction and the overlap of subjects really helps engage more students and helps them absorb the material and be able to use it for the future. So, Hi, everyone. I'm Nava. Um, so there are a few challenges with these changes. Um, philosophy itself can be hard to engage in or even understand. Um, philosophy does not have one specific answer. You have to uh, discuss both sides. So it's some students might find it hard to change their perspective in that way. 
And students also have many different ways of learning. There's auditory, um, there's uh, visual, and there's hands-on learning. The way I learn is hands-on learning, while some other people may find it easier for auditory learning. But it's very important for teachers to um, accommodate for the way of someone, like certain students learn. Um, students also may find it hard to share their opinions, especially at this age. Um, many fear like judgment or they have anxiety, don't want to say their opinion. So it's very important for the environment to be um, welcoming and um, comforting for students to share their opinions. Um, it is also very important for the teacher themselves to be good at their uh, good at teaching. Um, I've had so many times where a teacher has just talked and didn't explain anything, didn't really answer questions, just just kind of stood there and talked without actually teaching. And I've discussed with my classmates. Um, it's very hard to learn that way, or if they just put a video and expect you to learn it. Um, it's very important for hands-on learning or specific. Um, ways of learning to be accommodated for. Um, some schools, some high schools may have uh, resources that are not accessible to other schools. So I may have um, resources that Richa may not have, um, or she may have resources that I don't have. So it's important that um, at least, because I mean, money is um, a factor. <laughs> um, some schools may not have as much money, but it is important to find different ways of accommodating for that. Um, and some students, especially in high school, they're thinking about their future and they may already know what they wanna do. Um, uh, they may already know what they wanna do. Sorry. Um, the So their passion, they may already have a passion and so other subjects may not seem um, as relevant or important to them. So they may not engage as well. So accommodating for their, um, like incorporating things that uh, high school students enjoy, uh, maybe sports or even um, famous people, for example. Um, I've had a classes where I've watched a movie, but it was more um, like I actually learned something from it. it. It was a educational movie, but it had certain things that grabbed my attention and I was able to learn. Um, so, um, now we can go into discussion questions, but um, for example, I have one for, or a few, for example, but what interactive or hands-on activities can be used to make subjects more engaging and accessible to high school students? For me, um, I recently took a class for philosophy, it was film and philosophy, and we watched a lot of engaging movies. And later we had to discuss it in groups and um, as a class and everyone shared their opinions because it was it was very welcoming environment. Um, and then we had to write a paper on it. So yes, there was like the paper portion and the working portion, but um, it was more engaging. And everyone in that um, class was engaged. Everybody had their own papers. They had movies that they had um, felt like they were more engaged in and um, were able to discuss. So yes. if there's any questions. Thank you both. Uh, before we get started and answering that first great question, thanks Nava and Richa. Um, I'm just gonna welcome everyone who's come in since the beginning. And if you haven't already done so, please put your first and last name and email address in the chat, um, just so we can have that for our records. And we're now moving on to the discussion portion of our talk. So everyone, please feel free to turn on your camera while we all talk to one another. Um, so with that, I'll give it back to you, Nava. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> 